Hello again. Now, gender-based violence remains an increasing problem in South Africa. The quarterly crime stats released by Police Minister Begitele last November show that almost 10,000 cases of rape were reported just in that three-month period from July to September. So how effective are campaigns like the 16 Days of No Violence Against Women and Children? Should we not be focusing on gender-based violence 365 days of the year? Let's speak to gender and culture researcher Nomboni Sokasa. Nomboni, good afternoon, and thank you very much for your time and compliments uh, for, um, um, for, for, for the season. Y you know, this question comes up now and again. We seem to have this burst of activity and action as a country when we're seized with issues of GBV, either when there's been a, another horrific murder that we report on, then there's outrage, or when we come to 16 days of activism. But, but we are told this is an epidemic. Surely we should be approaching it more or less like how we're dealing with COVID-19. Good afternoon, and thank you so much for having me. <clears throat> and uh, compliments. I think um, you're right that um, we have to be more consistent and, and, and look at how we integrate working to end gender-based violence every day of our lives, both at the level of the life of government, the state, and what is done, but also at the, life, at the level of our own lives in our communities and in our homes. Um, I think that it's not 365 days versus um, um, you know, 16 days. I think 16 days, we have to look at it as a time of concentrated, heightened awareness. What makes it feel that uh, for the better part of the year we forget about it is because there's very little communication in government, uh, from government certainly, about what is being done, how it is being done. There's very little visibility um, in terms of when we go to police stations uh, and other, you know, uh, places of, um, of, 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 of public facilities of government. We don't really see a communication uh, of that uh, that this is urgent and that this is considered as an ongoing problem. The seven seven percent increase um, in the in the in, in the statistics that you referred to seven percent increase or in rape um, uh, is is alarming for a country like ours because our levels of gender based violence are already. Um, very, very high. So I think that there are a number of things that need to happen. One, I agree with you that there has to be a more visible and a more um, intense way in which government and government departments that are charged with this responsibility approach um, gender-based violence. Um, there should be, in addition to the National Steering Committee, there should be almost a permanent um, structure, if you like, um, it doesn't have to be people who are full, uh, employed full time, but it, there has to be some kind of a structure that exists that um, you know overlooks how research is being done, that overlooks um, how uh, the police, for example, their own understanding of gender-based violence and how they handle it because there's a problem. Mm. The, the other major problem that we have in South Africa is that forensically, in terms of forensic um, investigations and, and evidence, the, the capacity of government is very, very challenged. There is, we are still talking about the fact that we need to have DNA kits. In my own experience of rape, for example, uh, when I uh, went to the police and all that, I was given an expired rape, a rape kit that was in 1997. So we'd like to believe that uh, you know those things have changed now, but unfortunately, people's stories tell us every day that and, and, really yeah, really... and tied to that, there's also the issue of the DNA backlog in investigations. Yeah. Well, there's the DNA backlog. There's the fact that um, in the entire forensic uh, evidence and, 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 and research and resources of government are very, um, it's very weak. You know, one of the things that we have seen in dealing with um, the COVID pandemic has been government working closely with other initiatives to try and address specific um, issues. For example, we've seen how effective the solidarity um, 
the solidarity fund is in trying to help alleviate some of the challenges. So you could have an initiative like that. In South Africa, we have a lot of people that are trained in, in coding, in terms of computers, in, in all sorts of technology that could be um, used to assist the police, but it is not happening. And I have to say that over and above the inadequacy of the police and sometimes a lack of training and sensitivity, I do have to say that the impact of corruption and incompetence um, on a number of key issues, including dealing with gender-based violence in society, uh, I think it's very, um, it's very, very harmful to these kinds of Issues. Yeah, so it, it's got yeah, that, that negative impact, a very harmful one. I was just thinking here about the role of, um, of men. I mean, we men are the, are the major, major perpetrators of, uh, of GBV in the country, and we're always told that we need to pay attention as well uh, on an ongoing basis on, 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 on boys. What is your sense about interventions that can be done at the grassroots level, at the family level? Look, uh, let's, let's look at um, things that we, do, we don't often talk about. Let's look at how social media, for example, operates. Where they are talking about, you know, the youth, some of the youth use TikTok, uh, you know, people of our age use uh, other social platforms like Twitter and all that. The way in which, you know, rape, for example, is 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 being normalized as 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 a as as a way of punishing wayward women. Um, you know, every time when people are going after journalists like Karen Mon, uh, you know, and many others, Reddy Shabi and and others. You find people saying, you know, when you need to be raped, mm. um, as if rape is a legitimate yeah. way of dealing with disagreement. So the levels of gender-based violence on an everyday level, every day in every minute, um, I think we need to talk about that. We need to talk about yeah. how punishing women is normalized. If we look at how we, what we do in our own homes, what to do with our own children, we need to look at how best the, some of this kind of training and awareness can be integrated in the education system. system. Uh, because very... us as parents do not necessarily know a different way. We are products of a very violent society. We ourselves are victims of violence. So we need um, you know, a whole range of other uh, institutions to come and assist and, and really help us understand what it is that we're talking about when you talk about gender-based violence. Okay. Nombo Nisokasa, thank you very much uh, for your patience and your time and some of your contribution. The views, they very important indeed and how we can deal with uh, GBV just beyond the 16 days of activism.